both share with you that there was no beer consumed in that segment about the beer festival. But now we're going to be talking with Joey Sanchez, who's the marketing coordinator of Virginia Arts Festival, and more importantly, is putting together a day at the zoo the exact same weekend, right? That's right. It's May 20th, so it's right after our beer festival. So this event is really a chance for you to get your family out, have a great day at the zoo, and sort of discover art and, and the great setting of the Virginia Zoo. So. Joey, can we talk turkey? Come on. I mean, when I think, I th as I said in the last segment, I mean, mm -hmm. here at the Arts Festival, it's got Renee Fleming. It's got all of these opera singers, the classics. And we're now kind of wrapping up. It's been an awesome season, and you're at the zoo. That's right. The challenge for us as an arts organization is to find ways to make this art form relevant and accessible. And we have thought this was a great partnership it's with the cool. Virginia Zoo. It's, it's so cool. It's so cool. This piece, Carnival of the Animals, is a 14 movement piece. It was written by Camille Saint Saens. It's basically short little movements that you know introduce kids to the sounds of the wild and classical music. In fact, this piece has been featured on Disney's Fantasia, for instance. It's very fun and whimsical. We have narration. It's basically a way to engage kids and introduce them, and we want to build audiences for the future. You know, the Arts Festival has been very successful for 16 years, and it's about educating and sort of making ways in which t that the art form is fun and available, so we're building audiences and enriching the community. So this event we have at the zoo, it's, we've got face painting, we've got bounce houses for the kids, we're going to have everyone dressed up in animal costume, and we're also going to have a scavenger hunt. So what the piece does is it actually uh, introduces you not only to music, but animals. So for instance, the flute depicts birds. We have uh, the string bass mimicking an elephant trying to do a waltz. So we're going to have the kids oh, cool. go out and, you know, hey, I learned about this animal, and actually go and do a scavenger hunt. And when they're finished, they go to the zoo um, office and they get a token to ride uh, the train for free as well. So it's cool. going to be really fun. We've got Twisted Sisters Cupcakes, who's a, a tremendous vendor in Norfolk. They came to our chocolate festival, and they're going to have uh, animal-themed cupcakes. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we've got face painting. We also have our Rhythm Project, which is our all-star group of students who play steel drums. They're going to be performing. So it's a really all-encompassing day, and we're very thankful to have that partnership with the Virginia Zoo. So, you know, gates open at 11. The concert itself starts at 2. And so it's a very short concert. And so that way we want you to stay at the zoo and, and get a chance to sort of interact with the animals. So we're very excited about this event. It's received a tremendous amount of support. Uh, and we just feel like this is a way that we can enrich the community. And again, going back to your question earlier, where we present such things as Renee Fleming, American Ballet Theater, this is a way to show kids why this is cool and why this is good to, for the community. Well, I, I remember the first time, you know, I was just thinking when you were talking, that the first time I heard Peter and the Wolf was on a black vinyl record, and it meant, it was like, as a kid, I'm saying, yeah, sure. That's supposed to sound like, you know, and there was no relevance. So to bring it into the into the zoo is really a cool concept. And it's great. We're going to be outdoors, so we sort of have the zoo pavilion area. We're going to have a seated area, but we're actually encouraging those people to bring, like, blankets. So it's like a picnic environment. So, you know, kids aren't used to going to Chrysler Hall, for instance, and right. sitting in a chair, you know. And having for, to behave. Exactly. So they can run around, and it'll be completely appropriate because they'll be dressed up as their favorite zoo animal. So we want this to be a fun family event. And we really think it's going to be tremendously successful, again, with the support of the zoo. And the community has been fantastic. Uh, and this, you mentioned Peter and the Wolf. That's a con you know, piece that's featured on children's concerts. Yeah. This piece, Carnival of the Animals, is the same way, you know, the young person's concerts that Leonard Bernstein is famous for. You'll recognize, when you bring your family to this event, you'll recognize some of uh, the music. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, for instance, is oh, you're in kidding. there. He's sort of goes back and sort of references classical music that you're probably familiar with that sort of pokes fun at it in a way that's fun. And actually, he was a pianist himself, and he was kind of embarrassed that he wrote this piece because, as you know, classical music has this perception of being very rigid. And he wrote this piece just for his friends, you know, just as something fun. And he actually uh, was encouraged by his friend, Franz Liszt, who's a very famous pianist-composer himself, 
to get this out? Was it received such tremendous feedback and it gained popularity being featured on children's concerts all over the world? So it's really humorous. We've got narration as well. So it's not just music. So the kids are going to get to laugh. They're going to get to experience music in a new, meaningful way. That is so cool. And that really, I think, is the essence of the art. So I was teasing Kelly in the last segment about you know, the, the beer fest and that. But in a way, it really gets that community conversation going about around the arts. And it's not just a matter of something, that's something for somebody else. Or it's Chrysler Hall, Harrison Opera House. It really brings it into the community. I know that uh, the talk of the town uh, while we've been taping this has been uh, the, the move, the, the emotional moving of the tattoo. Right. And, but there's all, now I understand you and I were at Chrysler Hall at the same time during Giselle. That's correct. But I, was, I just saw the top of your head, right? That's right. I was in the pit. So what's great about playing these ballets, because you've, you've asked me, you know, you know, the arts festival is very rigid. What's great during intermission is to have families and young kids sort of oh. peek their head over and, and look into the pit, ask questions. What is this instrument? What sound does it make? And then in the second half, for instance, after they've come and introduced themselves during intermission, they've got that connection. There's something they're listening for. They understand what these sounds are making, and it's kind of an engaging way instead of just sitting there. And yeah, now, but speaking of the impact, it just, I mean, okay, so you were in the pit, mm -hmm. so you were, perf you were performing percussion, right? I was actually playing timpani with the Virginia Symphony, so. So the symphony was there, but they also, so there's an intermingling between the touring company, because in that case, a lot of them came, the principals came from New York, right? That's correct. They're a New York-based company. They made their festival debut this year, so it was a real coup for us to get them because their season at the Met followed uh, their Norfolk debut. So we were very fortunate to sort of catch them right before they were beginning their season, and it just worked out great. So, uh, you know, it was just tremendous, tremendously successful. But then there were opportunities for some of our local, like the people from Governor School, hurrah players, that kind of thing to actually be part of that first scene. I found out after that. That's the right. We had an open casting call, so it was a tremendous opportunity for the young community, the young arts community, to get to participate in something like that. So when we talked about the Arts Festival maturing to where's Norfolk to now people looking for Norfolk for the arts, it means a lot to It to really does. I mean, we're offering world-class performing arts, and our goal is to enrich the community. And it's really putting Norfolk on the map and it's, it's infusing tourism, encouraging people to discover art in new ways that they, they haven't before. Because when you bring your Renee Fleming's American Ballet Theater, uh, you know, Bruce Brubaker, you bring Renee Fleming, you're, you're changing the landscape of this community. And it all goes back to, you know, you mentioned to me before about the art form not being quite that accessible. It's like going to a restaurant and ordering your favorite steak and getting the same thing over and over again. You know, you're sort of reluctant to try something new, but if you don't take that leap of faith, you, you're not going to discover your next new dish, your go. next new favorite thing. So, what a great way to put it. Okay, so we had an awesome weekend coming up between the Hope House and the uh, Soccer Art Show being on the 19th and 20th. We got the Beer Fest on the 19th, and then for the family uh, on the 20th, uh, the Carnival of Animals. Carnival of the Animals, Virginia Arts Festival Day at the Zoo. So gates open up at 11. Uh, we would encourage you to purchase your tickets ahead of time. And that's the website is? VAFest.org, or you can call our box office at 282-2822, and uh, our friendly box office staff will answer any questions you have and get you all set. Sounds good. And did you say waltzing elephant? Yes, we have everything. We have turtles, kangaroos, even a sweet swan at the end played Those by the cello. Those are some mental so. pictures. That's Thanks, right. Joey, for everything that you've done to bring not just the culture to the community, but the community into the arts. Appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you for having me. We'd like to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your community? What would you like to celebrate? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you.